Well, I think this is a, it makes sense for me and Shannon to introduce yourself first before we let you lot introduce yourself. Uh, Shannon, you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'll let you go first. Of course you would. So, as you lot already know, my name is Aladdin. Um, I'm 21 and I have been doing stuff with so like work and voluntary stuff, um, voluntary work with Street Games uh, since I was 17, 18, early, early time, um, a while back. Um, so I first started out with a, I was, I was helping plan a residential with Street Games alongside Shannon and a bunch of other young people. Um, and we were plan basically planned it and then set it and obviously led it through, I think it was three days, right? Two or three days. Um, and since then, I've just been, because obviously I enjoyed that experience a lot. So since then, I just kept coming back to Lucy, come back to whoever, just, just asking if there's any opportunities, anything active, anything there, here, there, wherever. Um, and constantly just been just requesting opportunities just to do new things and do crazy stuff. Um, as of recent, uh, so my, my, my uh, original field is sport and coaching, specifically combat sports, so boxing, etc. Um, and recently, I decided to kind of dip my toe inside like the media industry and, and learn how to like create content and stuff like that. And um, I started like, editing, started filming, etc., etc. Um, I spoke to Lucy about it, and she basically opened a stupid amount of doors for me. Uh, she basically just led me to like this group called Iconic Steps, which gave me an opportunity to work in Kensington Film Studio, which is one of the biggest film studios in London. Um, and from there, I've just been like just just trying out new things here and there, all in the media industry, just getting experience, um, getting paid work, getting voluntary work, or whatnot, managing networking with some amazing people. Um, so, like to summarize, I'm I'm the guy with a camera who knows how to punch very well. So yeah. Shannon, you're up. Hi, I'm Shannon, I'm 20. Um, so I've been involved with Street Games since 2017, I believe. And that was being involved with my community um, sports club. I was volunteering weekly, like helping young people get into sport. And then we got the opportunity to be invited to a residential. Um, we took part. I absolutely enjoyed it and I thought to myself, I want to do this. Um, so the next year, um, Lucy sent out applications and fortunately I managed to get in as a young supervisor, a uh, young advisor um, alongside Aladdin. So obviously I won't go into too much because Aladdin's explained a bit, but we've done a residential, really enjoyed it. Then again, there was another opportunity to take part in a European health championship. Um, me and Aladdin both got the roles of young advisors to do that as well, where we had people from Malta, Bulgaria all come over. It was it was an amazing experience. And then we all, me and Aladdin also took part in an NHS conference as well. And this is the start of my journey of the career that I've taken, like chosen to go into. Um, and I was on the table supporting mental health because mental health means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family and friends. Um, so I was ma I managed to take part in that, which was a great opportunity. Since then, I am currently studying at Canterbury Christchurch University. I am training to be a mental health nurse. I am currently in my second year. Um, I've just got one exam left for this year, then I'll be done. So at the end of this month, I'll be done and then I'll be qualified this time next year. Um, so, yeah, my background is just more mental health now. I did study sport for eight years. Um, so hopefully in the future, I can still take that forward and go through with raising mental health within sport. So I don't know if you guys want to introduce yourselves, maybe. I don't know who wants to go first. <laughs> If no one volunteers, I might have to pick someone out. You don't want me to pick someone out. I should just want to use one of you volunteer. I always hate being picked on, so someone speak up. I don't know what to say, but shall I just say, well, I'm loving. I don't know what else to say. Uh, but how old are you? What's, so obviously, obviously, how old are you? In, in, depending on your age, like, do you go to school? Do you go to college? What do you do? What's your, like, your passion kind of thing? Um, well, I'm 17, so I'm at my first year of sixth form. Um... 
I'm currently doing science, sport and RE, but I'm going to drop RE next year and double up on sport um, because then it's all coursework, um, which is easier. And I want to be a paramedic when I'm older. Okay, that's fair. Who's next? The lucky person going next. Lizzie, you're up. Um, my name is Lizzie. I'm 14 years old and I'm in year nine. And, what are you studying, Lizzie? Um, I'm gonna, I, I want to study PE, geography, and food tech. Okay. Do you know what you want to study in the future? Like, do you want to do A levels? Do you want to go to uni? Um, yeah, I want to go to uni. What do you want to study? I'm not sure yet, but yeah. Did your sister, okay, cool. is it your sister with you? Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Do you want to do a little intro? Okay. Cool. Hi, um, I'm Alice. I'm 14 right now. Um, I'm, I'm in secondary school. I'm in year nine. Um, I'm trying to study for next year um, GCSEs. I'm studying... BTEC sports, um, triple science and geography and right now I'm volunteering for Berger Sports. Do you have any future plans? Not sure but I think it will be like surrounding um, sports I guess yeah. Okay. Uh, last but not least. I'm Ro. I'm 15. Yeah. What do you do? Your, like, yeah, so like, what, what, what do you study? What's your, what's your passion? What do you want to do for like a career or in the future? Kind of thing? I study Spanish, DT, and religious and the required subjects. And um, I would like to do a medical profession or a creative profession like photography or art. Okay, cool. If you went to medical. All right, so the whole basis of today and this conversation is to essentially talk about employability, education, and training. Um, and it, like it, like it's, it's titled. It's, it's called. This thing is called in conversation. So it's not a case of like. I just this is obviously this is how like I feel like it should go. Like there's not a thing where I ask a question, everyone answers the question, then I ask another question. Everyone. It's more like a conversation. So if you feel like you have something to say based on the question that's been asked, or if you feel like you have you have some type of insight or some have some type of value you want to add uh, to the conversation, then by all means feel free to butt in. Um, I, I take no offense to being interrupted. So yeah, I just talk a lot. So. Um, yeah, so essentially the first question that we have is based around the future. Um, I guess the question, the question really is like, what is your, right now, what is your plans with the future? Where do you see yourself, let's say in about five to 10 years, um, career wise, if not education wise, and what kind of things, one, are you doing to get there? And two, uh, um, do you think you need to do to get there? So, for example, if you are looking to build a career in sports, and let's say, for example, you wanted to be wanted to build a career in football, so to know to get there, or you need to start training, why you need to get in contact with like some scouts or some coaches and build from there, kind of thing. So, yeah. So, what, so again, like I said, feel free to answer the question where we want to go first and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so what you're like doing, that would do want to do career wise in the future, and what you're like doing to get there. Well, um, in the future, I want to see myself um, in a university, probably studying um, a type of sport. What was it like? Um, yeah, I think it's to do with the muscles and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, like, for me to go there, I think I just need to 
I, I, I will um, have like opportunities at the sports camp I volunteer for and yeah. yeah. What, what part of, um... oh sorry, go on, Sean. I was just going to elaborate because I'll see where I go to uni. Like when you do these volunteering opportunities, these are really good sources to put on um, your CV and your covering letter and um, your application. Because when I went for my interview, that's all they were asking about was what's your volunteering? What were you doing? How did you do it? Like what impact did it have? Like it's a really good source like to show like your social skills, your interaction and like what you've learned. And obviously if you're wanting to go into sport, Lizzie, and you're taking opportunities in with street games, these are really good factors to put on and like put into detail and then you can explain more in your interviews um, because this will stand out for you because it really helped me stand out from my application to everyone else. I think that um, I realised when I was younger is that interviewers, interviewees, uh, interviewers, sorry, or people that you want to get work with or get employed with, whatever, even get, uni, uh, get into uni with, they value experience a lot. So any, any type of experience you have in that field, it has to be put out there. It's not like a thing of, oh, you did this amazing thing a year ago in sports, but you're keeping it a secret. That's like the last thing you want to do. Um, so they value experience a lot. Um, and at a young age, the best way to get experience is by volunteering as much as you can. Having access to something like street games or even other charities or, 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 or whatnot. Having the ability to say, yeah, I'm free this day. Can I help out? Or yeah, I'm free this day, this week. Can I just put in my two cents and, and give, as much, give as much as I can and obviously take as much as I can from that as well, that being experience and learning. Um, so yeah. Does anyone else want to let us know what their future plans are and how they're trying to get there? Go ahead. Um, my future plans are to like to finish GCSEs, um, do some A levels, and then from there, I want to get some like work experience and stuff, and do volunteering. And then I will consider going to university. What part of university do you kind of look forward to kind of thing? So what, what, when someone says, oh, university, what comes to mind? Studying. Is that, is that that's like the main thing, right? So like, is there anything that about uni, maybe like the uni experience or something that, that, that sparks or, or stands out for you? You'll get to meet lots of new people and like you can get opportunities because mm. it's actually interesting me and shannon have two very different ideologies in terms of uni um i'm like very anti-uni i really disagree with uni i think like that's just that's something that i don't ever see myself taking part in whereas shannon actually goes to uni um whether she supports the idea of it i don't know i haven't had a conversation with her yet um oh then but yeah um so it's, it's interesting like because obviously from my perspective like uni not to say is 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 a, is a bag of BS, but it's like it's 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 it's, it's, like, it's like a thing for me. In my opinion, like it's a thing where it depends how you kind of use it in a way. Like most things, a lot of people would go uni, spend like thousands of pounds to waste their life, kind of thing. But at the same time, I have been to university facilities and I have seen what they have to offer. So as long as like you're you're using it to the best of your ability. And again, doing a lot of voluntary work and getting as much experience as you can, you can get the most out of it. Like I said, you are paying a stupid amount of money. So you must, it, like, it only makes sense to get your money's worth. Yeah, I have to admit, with my course, um, we're mainly on placements. Um, so really, a better opportunity for nursing is for an apprentice, like my personal opinion, it's for an apprenticeship. Um, because you don't really go to university that much it's just there for a, a little support mechanism and then you just got to do a little bit of academic work that is literally it um, but you literally learn majority of everything on your placement so 
in some aspects I do agree with Aladdin like university is very expensive sometimes it is a little bit of a rip off for your money um but at the same time it's different courses different courses suit universities some don't you've just got to find that balance but there's different ways that you can get into different careers um obviously like street games have loads of apprenticeships so you guys could look into that as well if you wasn't keen on going to university because that was one of the things I was looking into um, before I changed my mind and wanted to go into mental health because I studied sport for eight years and I wanted to go into that field. Um, but obviously I had a different career change, but there are plenty of options out there if you didn't want to go to university. Um, but yeah. Cool. Uh, and anyone else want to want to spy your the <clears throat> their goals, the the future plans, and how they plan on getting there? Um, yeah, so I want to be a paramedic. Um, I'm currently like going through the UCAS process and stuff because I'm at sixth form, so I'm dropping RE to double up on my sports and get like enough UCAS points. My first choice of uni because I won't get high enough in RE if not to get the points and stuff because I'm not that academic. Um. And I want to do a gap year before I go to uni. Um, I kind of looked into, I've got three choice of uni that I want to go to at the minute. So I'm kind of like choosing between them and which order to put them in and stuff. Yeah. And then trying to get experience and stuff. I was just going to say, what was you going to do in your gap year? Were you using that to do the experience? Um, no, I want to go to a holiday centre. It's in Sheffield. It's a Christian holiday centre, which like runs residentials and stuff for primary schools. Oh, nice. That's so, yeah, good. I want to yeah, do that. You know what? Gap year is like one of my favourite words, or I don't know if I call it a word or phrase, because I guess if you want to move, look at it in a more philosophical side of it, it's like gap year, like a whole year is enough to change your person completely. Like you'll be a different person in the space of a year. So the way you think will change in a year as well. Um, so whenever I talk to people about uni and whether they want to go uni or not, I always say take the gap year. It really helps. Like, even me, when I was when I was 17, 18, like, because like, I come from an Arabian household, so like uni was like a priority. It's, a, it's, a, it's not, not negotiable. Negotiable, sorry. And my sister went, but I said, I don't, I'm not, I, I never really was on it. But I thought, you know, let me take a gap year and make my decision in that space at that time. So in that gap year, I managed to do some amazing things with Street Games, with a lot of other companies. And it wasn't until that I realized, yeah, I can still get a lot of value and experience without paying 9,000 pounds, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, like, like whenever people say, say I'm gonna take a gap year, whatever, like that, that brings some type of joy to my heart because I know that, not that you're gonna, in that gap year, you're gonna choose not to, but like in that gap year, you're gonna find yourself a lot more and you're going to have that more mature and more um, a, a better judgment of what you want, what you choose to do with life. Uh, I think we've got Lizzie and Alice who haven't answered the question yet, so you're not, feel Alice, free to um, choose who goes first. Yeah, Alice has, but um, I would like okay. to work with kids, and I don't know where, but like I want to work with kids. So to get there, I would like do you like volunteering? around children and helping them yeah. yeah do you have any experience working with young people um yeah um we go to a sports camp during like every holiday to help out mm -hmm. coaches with sports what kind of sports um multi multi sports um football. tennis <laughs> football yeah, the basic, the basic six. Like the, yeah. yeah. I hear that. Um, you know, I, I did want to ask because I do work with kids. I work with kids as well. I've been working, I've been coaching boxing and doing youth work um, since I was 15, I think, 15, 16. Um, and I've been working with 7 to 14 year olds for that the whole time. I did want to ask you a lot um, if you do choose to work with kids, what is it about working with kids do you find most valuable or most enjoyable? Um, I just like, like, like getting together with people and like having fun. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, whenever I work with kids, whenever I like, it's like, 
because I, I tend to work with the same kids in it so it's not like oh yeah every session a bag of new kids i've never met before like more time is i work with the same group of people for like a year maybe even over a year and is that that sense of progression that i feel like is most valuable like i so the, the session i coach today is called a twilight session and i used to be a part of that twilight session when i was young so when i was 11 i joined the twilight session i basically grew up in that twilight session um and i when I hit 14, obviously I graduated and went on to other other things. And then a year later, when I was 15, I started just chipping in, play, put them in my two cents, helping out where I can. And it's like that 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 experience of being there and then being here kind of thing, being in the class and being in front of the class. And it has a lot of value. You, you kind of know how these young people think and you kind of understand what works or what doesn't work. And... When you once you know what works and once you know what brings them back in, you get to see that luxury of that value of them progressing slowly and slowly and slowly and get more comfortable around you and get more comfortable being more open. Because like there's kids that I work with today that, I, I, that came in for the first time years ago. And when they came in for the first time, they wouldn't speak to no one. They'll come in quiet as a mouse just to do, do their push ups or do their box, their, their drills, whatever, go home, rinse and repeat. And to compare that to how they are now, where they're the loudest in the class, or they're the, the most energetic and the most active and the most um, that the most they, they come in the most out of the week, it's like a good feeling to be like almost in like an unselfish way. It's like it's like you are. I am the reason why they are the person they are today, to a certain extent. Um, so yeah, I find a lot of value in that when I work with young people and when I when I coach, I guess, like, especially for long periods of time. All right. So the second question that we got here is, um, what do you lot think would help a lot with? So, so let's say you have a microphone, no microphone. Um, what's those speakerphones? Whatever they're really called, and the whole of London can hear you, or the whole of England, or the whole of wherever you're from can hear you. What do you want to? What do you feel like? What do you feel like you require? What do you feel like you need to help you boost your potential of actually finding employment, finding work in your field, and that whatever you do? So, what do you lot want to help? What do you think will help you a lot? But I'm trying to word this question properly. I'm sorry that my is a bit backwards. But yeah, what do you lot think will help you a lot to get to where you want to get in terms of like someone coming in and helping you? Confidence. Okay. Can you elaborate on that? I'm like, you can't like having people speaking for you. And yeah, you have to do it yourself if you want to like mm. stand firm in what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. But like, it's like the question, the question I guess to ask is more how can, so let's say, let's say for example, street games. Obviously, this is not that. Like, what do you lot think street games can do to help you? Does that make sense? So what do you think any, any of these charities, any of these people can do to, what can they give you support-wise to help you and kind of, yeah, give you more to work with? I want to ask Ro to ask, answer this question because I haven't heard a voice in a while. Um, I don't really know because... From what I've heard, because I've never actually come to um, street games, from mm -hmm. what I've heard is that you guys, you guys like link the young people with opportunities so far, I guess. I don't know what people could do beyond that. Because giving yeah, so people that, opportunities is pretty good. Yeah. So what kind of, what kind of opportunities do you want for, for you? Like, as you as an individual, what kind of opportunities do you feel like will help you a lot in terms of like getting better at your field? volunteering with um like because because i want to go into two different fields volunteering with like children or like sick people and volunteering with like um i don't know galleries galleries volunteering with galleries art galleries yeah yep you've been to an art gallery I think I have once, but I don't really remember. Like primary school, isn't it? Yeah, like primary school, when like a class kind of thing, isn't it? 
Yes. Yeah, I think I did the same. Is uh, is there anything like you remember? Like, is it? Do you feel like having an experience going to that gallery kind of plays towards your passion for art today? Can you repeat the question, please? So, like, do you feel like so? What? what I guess. I guess the question I'm trying to ask is like, what do you what what do you think happened in your life to lead you to having a passion for art? What what? Because once upon a time you didn't have no passion for art, and now you do. So what do you think kind of happened? And do you think like maybe that like gallery experience might have played a part in it or anything else? What kind of happened to lead you to this passion that you have for art? Many people in my family, they like to do art and they're good at art. So for example, my grandma, she like she does art and it looks good. And yes, and um, mm. my sister, because I, I live with my sister, I always see her doing art all the time. And especially when I was younger, she was doing it a lot more than now. So that influenced me to like art. Yeah. Is it therapeutic? Sometimes. It depends. Okay. What kind of, what kind of art? I didn't get to ask that question. What kind of art do you do? I do drawing. I do photography. I don't know if you would consider writing, like creative writing art, but yeah, I do yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For for what it's worth, my biggest advice to you when it comes to stuff like that is make sure you're documenting it and you're sharing it. We do live in a world where if you do something and no one knows about it, then no one will ever know about it, kind of thing. So like if you are looking for work in the art industry or if you're looking for work in the photography industry, you can't take pictures or draw things or even write things and just keep it in your archives, keep it to yourself and assume someone will eventually find it and give you a job kind of thing. So that even if it if it's a thing where you have to post on Instagram or fit on or Snapchat or just just share your stuff to the world and because eventually one person will like it. One person will look at it and think, yeah, I like this drawing. Yeah, I like this 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 piece of writing. I like this picture that you took or edited. And they will give you opportunity. So like that's like the biggest advice I can give to anyone and that's 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 what's led me to do the things I've been doing today is that you don't keep anything to yourself. You make sure you share as much, even if you think it's bad, or like even if you like if it's if you obviously if it's terrible and it's like a stick man, then obviously you keep that to yourself. But if you do something, if you if you draw something or if you write something, and you think it's decent or whatever, share it. Make sure someone knows it, sees it. Even if you have to annoy the sh this, if, if you have to annoy someone to, to for them to read it or whatever, do it because it's that passion, it's that grind, is what that's what gives you opportunities and that's what makes you progress in this world. Without being proactive and actually doing things, you will never, I mean, it will be very difficult to find work and to be, find success in this world, yeah. Yeah, social media is a very big platform to push yourself out there. Like, it's, it's just what everyone is on. So if you want to be recognised, nice, social media is one way forward for it all, for sure. Mm. I mean, I guess like, one of the biggest ways to share any type of information is word of mouth like the people will say like how did you find out about this project or how do you find out about charity and 80% of the time people will say word of mouth so once upon a time word of mouth was actually physically me talking to you but now we have this thing called social media we have snapchat instagram facebook yeah all these, all these things and someone in congo can have a conversation with someone in india and they can now link up and, and build something amazing so yeah, again, on, on what Shannon said, that like, social media is an amazing thing when used correctly. And yeah, just, as long as you use it correctly, possibly it's endless. Can I just ask, have any of you been involved with in street games like, at all? I have been. Doing what? Doing what? Oh no, I said I haven't, but um, oh yeah, oh okay. <laughs> um, I have been on one of these Zoom calls um before though, but I think um the sports camp that I, um volunteer for, I think like they're um they link with um a street games or like they're sponsored something like that. Yeah. So if okay. there's an opportunity of a residential, would you guys go? Whether you take part in it or become a young advisor, would you do it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
like when I started I had no confidence at all like I was volunteering but I had very low confidence and self-esteem but as soon as I like um because we all met in Birmingham and it was such a great opportunity I literally walked into the room and, and I've never felt so scared in my life mm. but the people that you like bond with are amazing like me and Aladdin we're still in contact with all the people who we've worked with like with like one little family and um, we always check up on each other see how we're doing obviously post our pictures when they come up yearly of our memories um, and it's just such a great platform to get into like to widen your social networks as well and um, so like, I have friends all over the country and in different countries um, but I would really recommend going on the residential it it's made me who yeah, I am today. Like I'm just much more confident. Like when we were on our residential, we had to speak into microphones in front of people. I have not shaped so much in my life. And I think Aladdin was the same. We just had our heads down most of the time. But yeah. by the end of it, we were singing into the microphones, dancing around, leading sessions. Um, but honestly, it's an amazing opportunity if you get like to have it, just grab it and take it. I reckon like one of the best, best, best advice I can give anyone, and this is like something I've learned properly as of recent, networking and networking properly. So I have this kind of metaphor that I like to say, like, in my opinion, Boris Johnson looks like a numpty, but he's the prime minister of, of the country. So like no matter how weird or, or not normal someone might look, you never know what this person does or is or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So you can talk to any, if you talk to any and everyone, you will be surprised. You might talk to someone who might even look homeless, but next thing you know it, he's actually, or she's actually a producer on a, a major film, Disney film or, or Warner Brothers film or whatever. Like you can talk to someone who you see every day and you give no attention to, but little did you know, they're a, they're a photographer or they're a scout or they're, they're a youth worker. So you, you don't actually know what, a lot of people do until you actually have the conversation with them. Um, so like networking properly and, and making sure that whenever you do residentials, whenever you get opportunities to, to get some experience or whenever you get anything or if, like any kind of stuff that you have open to you, go to it and experience it and be there and make sure it makes yourself present by the same time, talk. That's the best thing I can tell anyone and everyone. Like when I got taught that lesson, I ignored that first because I was never the most confident. I would always like keep to myself and, and try to, avoid conversation and whatnot but you know, nowadays i'll talk to anyone and everyone like i'll just literally go to each individual person say yeah hi my name is Ladin. i do this 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 who are you what do you do and they tell me and i think okay cool how can i engage with this person how can i collaborate with this person like does this person do media does this person do sports does this person do whatever cool if they do media how can i how can i make a a, a, a video of them or how can i produce a video of them if they do school okay cool how can i cook how can I like coach them or coach with them? How can I be filming? So wherever you do, wherever you, wherever you go, whether it be residentials, whether it be art galleries, whether it be youth centers, whether it be no matter where you go, there's always going to be people who do amazing things and you will never know it unless you talk to them. So yeah, just like this whole thing of being needing confidence. Yeah. is definitely a big thing, but confidence is free. You feel me like that? Confidence is nothing. You have to pay for it. You just have to invest your time into learning how to do it. And it's literally just asking the simple question of hi, asking the question, who are you and what do you do? And that's when doors start opening. So leading on from that, what have you learned from your volunteering experiences and how is it like helped you like, going forward? I haven't heard Lauren talk, so I want Lauren to answer that question first. <laughs> I'd say like confidence definitely for me so for instance I do a coaching leadership academy at school um, and this summer we're leading like a summer camp for year six sevens and eights who have obviously missed out on a lot of our education recently mm -hmm. we locked down and learned at home it's just to like help them build confidence but we'll build our confidence well through leading it and we get paid to do it as well so we get the experience and then it's something good to put on personal statements and stuff for uni and I think just 
for me, like that volunteering at the minute, like I've got a first aid qualification coming up, safeguarding, working with difficult kids. And I think all of that helps me to build myself up. And then like, it makes me more aware of the world as well by doing that. That's good. Uh, Lizzie and Alice. Um, what was the question? Um, so. Um, so I asked, what have you learnt from your volunteering experiences and how have they helped you? Uh, Lizzie, you want to go first? Okay, what I've learnt is, um, uh, I guess, uh, that I need patience. Like, sometimes you need to, um, yeah, you need to have patience to be able to do stuff. Like, it's not in a rush. And over time, you would develop your confidence. So, yeah, I guess that's what I've done. Yeah. Is he? Um, that not everybody is like, <laughs> not, not everybody is going to be, not everybody's um, the same. So, that like, you have to have that. You have to do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but like, not everybody is the same, but we should treat everybody equally. And yeah. Yeah. So I kind of like have an open mind and just yeah, go into it kind of blind and not assuming anything because you will be surprised if you do start seeing your stuff. And yeah. That role, what about you? Um, what I learned was that because my volunteer work has only been with like vulnerable people, like people younger than me, et cetera. So I learned lead leadership skills because when you work with younger children, you have to, you have, to have leadership skills. And because um, it's um, very mixed, like children from all different backgrounds, all different ages, they come to the vol to the yeah. We, we, I learned to be versatile because everyone has different needs. Mm -hmm. Good man. All right. Um. So we're gonna look towards wrapping up. Um. But I do kind of want to finish up on a question. Uh. Give me like thirty seconds. I might want to think of a sign. That's that's kind of good. I haven't thought about it this far yet. Um, Sam, feel free to help. <laughs> um, what can I ask? Um, go on, put me on the spot now, Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool, cool. So, like, I want, I want, obviously, like, everything I do and any, any, anything I do, I always feel like, I, like having value towards it is like a priority. So, whenever I do things like this, I always want to make sure that I give someone some type of value so they can take on and go on and do better, bigger and better things. Um, so before wrapping up, I do want to ask each each, and every, each individual, what have you lot learned from this call and what what kind of thing do you lot want to start working on? So like, whether it be your confidence, whether it be your, your networking, whether it be your, your, your open-mindedness, what kind of things, because of this call, do you now want, have you learned and you want to start getting better with? So I'm not going to pick anyone because, yeah, whoever can go first can go first. I want to do... Um more volunteering because you guys you suggest that it brings about more opportunities mm -hmm. and I wanted to do that anyway but now I want to do it more and yeah that's cool I think that's um, like sorry no yeah, I was gonna say I know from like experience, like not everyone's gonna make it easier for you to, to achieve like what you want to achieve. But there's no point like keep trying, like don't let them put you down, like because you're not gonna achieve it. Like Aladdin said, like unless you put yourself out there, you're not gonna get out there. Mm -hmm. And like for me, like I've gone through like trauma as a child, and that always stopped me because I thought like it was my fault, and I was like everyone's gonna hate me. But I think I've learned that. If I put myself out there and I prove myself, then people like start to respect me in a way. And like, if I volunteer and do things for myself and build up myself, then I can get myself to where I want to be. I don't need to rely on other people because other people aren't always going to be there for me and have my back, kind of thing. Yeah. 
but also through volunteering I can help people who've kind of been in a place like me and maybe have got the same mindset as me and help turn that around for them as well. Yeah and just following on for that you've just got to do it at your own pace you do what you want to do you prioritise yourself and obviously that like, you've prioritised obviously I'm really big with mental health as you know do it at your own pace because over stressing will just decline your mental health but these kind of opportunities will really get you out there but just take it at like at your own time like they're really good like supporting you and obviously wherever you go there will be a good supporting network around you so 100% definitely agree um i did want to sorry i did want to say something about confidence so quickly like when it comes to confidence like street games is one of the biggest things that helped me my confidence like me and shannon would definitely agree on the fact that if you gave us this thing that we're doing right now two four three four years ago there is absolutely no way i'll be talking right now no. and it sounds like that, yeah, you weren't here now come out of my mouth and that's all because of confidence and confidence like, i realized that confidence it, it obviously helps a lot with a lot of things but essentially what it really is it's a speed booster it just helps you get things faster in a way so a lot of people don't really like the long the long part of doing things in life like they're like they're like learning like learning a new passion or they're like things being long essentially so i realized when you have confidence and you're open and you're always like this there and active things come faster and I guess that's what most people want in life. Just if people want things to come faster in life, that's what you want next to deliver on Amazon and whatnot. So yeah, just that as long as your confidence is at a certain level, things will always come towards you and progression will always be like a, a fast thing. Like a thing that's coming out of you fast. Uh, sorry, as long as forever. Uh, Lizzie slash Alice. Um, what I was going to say that I've learned is that... Um, Talking to people can open up doors. But like, for example, um, um, I, I, I go to church and, and they asked me to do online Bible study. And I'm the type of person, I wouldn't say no to it. So I'll be like, okay, I will do it. And me, um, like talking to people on that, um, the Bible study, it um, boosts my confidence and made me more comfort, comfortable to speak to people. So yeah, like speaking to people can open up opportunities and doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm um, that um that to be confident, but it's just not gonna happen like that quickly. Like you're gonna have to like like be in your environment. Yeah, yeah, for a, for some time to like, actually be comfortable around the people that you are. I'm sorry. I mean, I guess, I guess the age old saying is nothing in life, nothing, nothing that comes easy is worth having. You feel me? So like anything that you work hard for will come. Like even if you work in hard and it doesn't come, keep going because it will come eventually. And if it's, if it's something that happens easy, more time is not really worth having. So yeah. Um, unless Shannon, you have anything you want to say, um, I think it's time we can wrap this up with approaching 6.30, which is 6.26. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Shannon, do you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? Yeah, all I would say is, this is what I live by. You're still young at the end of the day. Go and have fun with whatever you do. Like, make it fun. Because if you don't make it fun, it's going to be boring. You're not going to enjoy it. So do what makes you happy. Make sure it's fun. And live life to the full. That's what I'd say. That's sweet.